Hello everypony, Corpulent Brony here. So, a little while ago, I posted what was to be the first video in a series called Days of Ponies Past. The series didn't garner the attention I had hoped it would, in my opinion because it was a bit repetitive. However, I still had a lot to say in the conclusion video, so I thought I'd just skip to that point here. I'd like to start out with the reason I decided to put this series together. There was a lot of consternation and confusion at the start of Season 4, when Celestia spoke about the Summer Sun Celebration, traditionally held on the longest day of the year. The way in which she spoke about how the celebration was finally going to be the first happy one that she could celebrate with her sister made it apparent this was the first Summer Sun Celebration held in Equestria, since the defeat of Nightmare Moon by our purple Pokitudinous Poindexter Pony Princess Twilight Sparkle. All hail her name. The fandom finally had a timeline upon which our collective fedoras could be hung. We now knew a year had elapsed from the first episode of Season 1 through the first episode of Season 4. But this fact created confusion, as every brony suffered the effects of time dilation, since three years of pony now equated to only a single year of observed time in Equestria. Thus ensued a slew of fan cannons, which attempted to ignore these new facts or explain them away. I still know ponies who refuse to accept that only a year passed between seasons 1 and 4. I have seen videos and analyses attempting to explain time in Equestria, from trying to measure how long a lunar cycle is, to how old the ponies are, to fitting non-linear episodes into an artificial timeline. Each attempt was afflicted with the same flaw, being based on either fan canon or the transposition of terrestrial science into the realm of Equestria. Since the ultimate source of show canon is the show itself, I decided to focus my analytical sight solely on what can actually be observed in each episode. To accomplish this, I went back and meticulously viewed each episode again, taking note of clues that denoted time passes including visual cues, such as when the sun sets or rises, dialogue cues, key words like tomorrow, next week, today, etc., and occasionally the application of common sense topped off with a guess. Then, for each episode, I recorded the minimum and maximum number of days that I observed pass. I take the total of each of these numbers and average them together to get the average number of days that appear to have passed. My first video on this topic went through season 1 in detail, and I I originally intended to release subsequent videos doing the same for each season, capping them all with a conclusion video. However, based on the reception of the first video, I was no longer sure that this was the direction in which I wanted to go. So instead, I'll take this time to quickly review the conclusions I've reached here and explore whether or not they support what the show itself appears to have said in the episode Princess Twilight Sparkle, that a year elapsed from the beginning of Season 1 through the beginning of Season 4. As mentioned in the first video, a minimum of 60 62 and a maximum of 86 days were seen to pass, for an average of 74 days. This number goes up a bit in Season 2, where a minimum of 106 and a maximum of 148 days were seen to pass, an average of 127 days. The reason for this increase is primarily due to the Baby Cakes episode, which begins at the birth of Pumpkin and Pound, and ends around their one month anniversary. Season 3, which contained half the episodes of prior seasons, shows a minimum of 25 and a maximum of 32 days, for an average of 28.5 days. Adding these times up, there's a minimum of 193 days and a maximum of 266 days, for an average of 229.5 days. If you'd like to take a deeper look into the numbers behind each of these episodes, I will put a link to the Google Document spreadsheet in the description below that I used. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to find any evidence in the show itself to definitively say how many days are in an equestrian year. Assuming the writers would be biased towards the rules that govern our own world would lead to the hypothesis that an equestrian year contains 365 days. So, even at the maximum of 266, the number of days we've actually seen occur in the first three seasons is well under the number of days in a terrestrial year by nearly 100, allowing for ample time between episodes that we'd never see. Therefore, I think it very plausible that the events portrayed in seasons 1 through 3 indeed took place in a single year. Please keep in mind, the only temporal linearity I am assuming here is by season, that is, the events portrayed in each season occur sometime within that season. If any episodes of season 4 occur before the premiere, things begin to get murkier again. 
again, I must point out I am not attempting to order the episodes at all. In fact, I believe such an analysis would be critically flawed for the reasons I pointed out at the beginning of this video. As such, I cannot definitively say anything about the apparent irregularity of the seasons in Equestria, nor is it very applicable to this study, quite frankly. Finally, before I depart, I'd like to propose a tangentially related hypothesis that I've suspected for a while as it regards equestrian time, and that is that the calendar used in their world may be of a sidereal lunar solar type due to the emphasis placed on the moon time period in Equestria. However, the summer sun celebration by its very nature is purely a solar event, being the annual solstice. As a result, some events that occur before or after this date to the typical lunisolar calendar may drift to either side of it. Just keep this in mind. I will likely revisit this idea in my next video about time, which will include plenty of interesting new tidbits I found in the research conducted for this video. So what are your thoughts? Am I a raving bloviator or my conclusions sound? Leave a comment below or on any of the social networks I frequent. Google+, Facebook, Twitter, Rony Square, DeviantArt, Tumblr, wherever you happen to find me. You'll find a complete list of links in the description to aid in your stalking efforts. Until then, see you later, everybody. Brony, get to them out of Kinsio, Flash Sentry, S.A. Dillendum. My soul for this star was the sprouting from the stars. And I'm trapped with twilight in a fantastic night where everyone tries to fight. How do I ever know I'm right? I guess that only time will tell Enjoying my corpulence